Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. And I've got some great special guests here. We're at uh, Luce Restaurant here in San Antonio. Not Lucy, not Luce. I told you, <laughs> Mom and Dad, it's Luce. And I'm the one that mispronounces all the Italian in the house. Um, I've got, see, we talked about this, I mess up pronunciations, but I'm going to do it just right. We've got Joe Bonaconte. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Jeremy Parson. Um, Joe's the owner of Luce. Uh, Jeremy has the uh, uh, blog um, Dobianchi. Dobianchi. Dobianchi.com. Yes. Yeah, Dobianchi, that's also his Twitter handle. Um, and uh, I met Jeremy back in last year at the Tech Song Conference in August. Uh, he did a blogging thing on a Saturday and uh, made sure I got there on Saturday for it. And it was a great day. And hopefully they'll do something very similar to it again. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, and Joe's had the restaurant here for quite a while, and since 2006. Like, yeah. Yeah. So t tell a little bit about the the restaurant. What was you sure. know why you came up with it and decided well, to open up a restaurant? <laughs> it, like a lot of people, it was a, a dream that I've had for many years, and uh, opened in 2006. And the focus is uh, Southern Italian uh, cuisine, and and many of the dishes that are on our menu are dishes and, and food items that I had growing up in an Italian-American uh, household. And now I have the opportunity to, to share, you know, these uh, these great dishes with, with San Antonio residents. Oh, great. And we, our families are our neighbors from the old country. <laughs> just found that out. Um, and you're obviously not from here. Just like no, my parents, they tell my parents exactly. that you're obviously not from here. I'm a native, native New Yorker. All right, cool. But I've been here over 23 years, so. I guess uh, I'm a true Texan now. There's a saying that you weren't born here, you got here as fast as you can. Exactly. Something like that. It's easy living. <laughs> no snow, at least not down here. <laughs> no ice storms, at least not much, doesn't get cold much. Yeah, um, so you moved here 20 some odd years ago. Um, what brought you to Texas? Uh, pretty lady. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's true. Met a, met a lady. Uh, <laughs> At a hotel that I work, we work together in a hotel. Okay. And uh, good. I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah, <laughs> that was in in '89. Uh, she moved and I chased her. Okay. Uh, I, I moved in in '89 and worked uh, in the hotel industry. And then in 2006, I decided that uh, I wanted to take a shot at that opening my own restaurant. And well, I guess I had a lot of preparation between the hotels. And, uh, you know, my mother was a fantastic cook. My, my grandmother, a fantastic cook. I grew up in a three-family home um, in Brooklyn where my grandmother lived in the basement, my family lived in the middle, and my aunt and uncle and my cousins lived above us. So this was it was almost like a restaurant scenario uh, growing up. Either my grandmother was cooking or my aunt or my mother. And we always had a lot of people around, and, and so it was a hospitable household, and I think that's, that's how I uh, really got plugged into uh, you know, loving Italian food and, and sharing and, and uh, here I am. Awesome. Awesome. So you started the place in 2006. Uh, you're focusing on Southern Italian food. Correct. Um, what, what differentiates Southern Italian food from Northern Italian food? Well, a lot of focus on tomatoes, uh, fresh mozzarella that we make uh, every day. Uh, great pizza, Neapolitan-style pizza with a you know, thin crust. Mm -hmm. Uh, lots of fresh vegetables and fresh seafood. Uh, you know, that to me, you know, encapsulates uh, Southern Italian cuisine. And, and, and that's, you know, that's what Luce is all about. Uh, you know, great uh, marinara sauce. You know, in, in my restaurant, I try to focus on, you know, great key ingredients such as tomato and, and uh, fresh seafood. And try not to overdo the cuisine with, with many different ingredients and, and, and try 
to have all the dishes uh, simply prepared so that you could taste you know, the quality of the ingredients and the freshness. Um, you know, that was my experience when I, when I traveled and worked in southern Italy and I tried to, um, you know, produce that here. Okay. Um, now tonight we're doing a, we're doing a, uh, a dinner and uh, we're going to be preparing some great food and wine and uh, I'm going to segue to a little bit of wine. Jeremy has got a great wine blog. Um, why don't you thank tell you. us a little bit about, about the blog if people are not familiar with it. Um, well, thanks very much. Thanks for having me on your show and thanks for being here. I had, had to laugh because I moved to Texas following a beautiful lady too. <laughs> so that, I've heard that story before and there's uh, it's not the first time I've heard that either. Um, I author a blog called dopeyanki.com. It's uh, uh, really a blog devoted to the life I share with my wife, uh, Tracy, and our daughter, daughter, Georgia. But we drink a lot of Italian wine, and we love Italian wine and food. I have a PhD in Italian, and uh, I travel to Italy you know, three or four times a year uh, because I work in the Italian wine business. And so. It's a blog devoted to our lives, but it's also about Italian wine. And um, I first met uh, Joe Warning Country uh, about almost four years ago now, when I uh, moved to Texas to marry that pretty lady. Um, and uh, really loved what he was doing here. I really loved his Italian wine selection. And so uh, when he called me about two months ago and said, hey, you know, I'd love to do an event for local food and wine bloggers, he asked me to reach out to other, you know, I have a very active blog, and of course I knew your blog, and I knew right. you from uh, the Texas uh, Sommelier Association seminar last year, um, and so we put this event together where we've got food, you know, some of the top, uh, well in my mind, the creme de la creme, the top uh, uh, food and wine bloggers, uh, uh, and of course Joe has a blog uh, on, on his website. On the side too, right? Yeah. So um, what what interests you in Italian? Why did you pick Italian wine versus any other wine? What how well, what, what did it speak to you? I, I got involved in Italian wine because during my studies uh, for my PhD in Italian, I lived I spent a lot of time in Italy. I'm interested in wine, of course, in food and wine. And my family would come and we would do food and wine tourism. And when I finished my PhD in '97. I realized that uh, medieval poetry really wasn't going to pay the bills. <laughs> and so I moved to New York, and I actually had, I had worked on some editing, some cookery books. I ended up getting a job at a magazine called La Cucina Italiana, and ended up becoming the wine writer. So I started writing about Italian wine uh, in 1998, and I, that's what I've done ever since that time. And what I found was that the price of the the price quality ratio in Italian wine was so much greater. You know, where I could afford to spend in Burgundy, I could buy a much higher caliber wine for, for, for my dollar in Italy. I found that I, I could uh, collect the wine, the wines are more affordable to collect and to drink, and uh, I just got really into it. I mean, of course, that's shifting now as Italian wines become so much more popular. You know, I started. Right, 98. I always say that's the year that Babo opened in New York and this Italian wave exploded. Right. Now, some of those values are gone, but there's still, in my mind, more value to quality in Italian wine than other, any other category. You know, Sp Spanish wine is getting up there, Loire Valley from France, but nothing can be with Italian Awesome. Um, so, we, we talked about the, uh, the food and wine pairing in your wine list. Where, where did you, um, how did you come up with, with the wines you put on there? Well, what's really, you know, just to piggyback on what Jeremy was saying, what's exciting to me is when, when I have a customer, a guest come into the restaurant, many times their first request is a Chardonnay or a Cabernet Sauvignon. Right. So that gives us the opportunity to expose them to, uh, you know, light wines from Italy. And, uh, you know, so, so really, that's, uh, I, have, I have wines from California, Chile, uh, France, South Africa, but 85% of my wines on the wine list are from Italy, and both myself and my staff try to match up, you know, what a customer's pre preference is, okay. um, and, and have them taste uh, the Italian version, for instance, for instance uh, you know, from our home 
our homeland, uh, Aglianico. Yes. You know, uh, I mean, they've been really liking that too. Fantastic wine. Right. You know, for someone who's, you know, used to drinking a, a medium body to full body California Cabernet or Merlot, uh, it's great to, to have them taste that wine. You know, they can, you know, really, uh, you know, enjoy it. Joseph has hosted a, a series of wine dinners for Blue Chain. Uh, yeah, talk about that. Really, yeah, really you have another one coming up too, right? It's yeah. on the website. You know, really interesting in that the you know the demand is, is so strong for the wine dinners that we've been doing, and obviously Jeremy is a part of each one of them. Uh, just a real interest in individuals wanting to educate their palate and, and become more more accustomed to the Italian wines. And uh, you know, we do a, a monthly wine dinner. And we consistently have to close it out at, at 50 guests, and uh, it's, it's been exciting. It gives you know me and the restaurant crew an opportunity to uh, try new dishes, and recipes, um, and then also you know learn because we're learning as well. Uh, you know, right. if you really want to feel like a dummy, start studying Italian wine and, and understanding the right. uh, you know 3,000. I think it was about 3,000 varieties. Yeah, I was you know, talking like, with Jerry about yeah. my, my, my one-liner, my little joke is there's as many, it's like there's as many versions of pasta as Italian grapes. I mean, once you think you saw the newest and latest and greatest, there's something new that comes around you've never heard of. Exactly. You know, and all the synonyms, too, for all the Italian grapes. Every village, different yeah. grain, yeah. every village, different <laughs> pasta shape. Right, right. exactly. So it's, it's been a nice, uh, nice experience. Awesome. Um, and we're we're we'll be doing a dinner tonight. Uh, can you describe what we're going to be having and, and what we're going to be carrying? Well, we're going to have a lot of antipasti okay. uh, to start out with, and uh, a couple of items to mention: uh, arancini di riso, which is an Italian uh, rice ball. Arancini translate to little oranges. Okay. So we're going to have uh, you know, little golden fried rice balls. It's uh, arborio rice formed in a, looks like a meatball, but it's a rice ball. Just simply put together with uh, parsley and Reggiano Parmigiano cheese, the arborio rice, fresh parsley. It's rolled in flour, dredged in breadcrumbs and deep fried, and we serve that with the bolognese sauce. Our bolognese sauce is special, I believe, because we, you know, we use lots of fresh uh, vegetables, celery, the carrots, the onions, of course, and then uh, veal, beef, and pork. So it makes for a nice, rich uh, sauce. Yeah. Okay. We're going <laughs> to that already. <laughs> got two great pizzas, classic pizzas. Uh, pizza Bianco, which is going to be a white pizza, and a pizza mushroom. Uh, and then also we're going to do my mother's uh, meatball recipe. So right. we have uh, polpette napolitana and the salata di mari. And, and so we're going to, you know, we're going to partake in uh, a nice course of antipasto. Uh, from there, uh, we're going to have a pasta fagioli. Again, a family recipe. And it's interesting, you know, in, in our household, there were certain dishes that we ate certain days of the week. It's sort of a ritual yes. or a tradition. I've yeah. heard of this. Uh, my father talks about this. And, and growing up, when I was born in Jersey, we stayed, we lived at the house. So I said it was two family. My, my grandparents and my uh, aunt lived on the first floor. We had the, my mom, my parents and I were on the second floor until a few years that we moved to South Jersey. But um, it was always it's Sunday. It's this, it's this type of food day. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so pasta and beans was a Monday dish. Right. Uh, in our house, so we're gonna have pasta and beans uh, tonight, and then uh, a milanese, uh, typical of southern Italy. We're gonna have veal milanese with uh, fresh arugula and grape tomatoes, and uh, then we'll work our way to dessert. We're gonna have uh, tiramisu and cannoli, right. and uh, I have a custom-made spumoni, uh, which uh, is emblematic of the Italian flag in that it's red, white, and green. We're gonna have a cherry gelato pistachio gelato and a panna cotta gelato. Uh, so you have some nice dessert choices and an array of uh, great, great Italian wines. You know, my menu here at Luce is heavily, heavily weighted on antipasto, so there's many, many different ways that you can eat when you come to Luce. We have a really strong happy hour crowd that likes to partake in, you know, a long list of wine by the glass and antipasti. And, uh, you know, if, if you really want to have a big and heavy dinner, you could work your way up to the uh, Osso Bufo, which is mm -hmm. on the menu uh, every day that we're open. 
So, uh, you know, we have a, uh, a great selection tonight. Awesome. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, when I looked at the website, look at the wine list, um, I'd say, I mean, me and my family, we'll, we'll go out and we have our favorites. Um, but I, I find that uh, some of the other Italian restaurants in town really have a very small selection of Italian wines. They tend to go with the, pe- the wines that I guess people know. And um, I'm excited just not only just because we're going to be pairing Italian food, Italian wine, but to make more visits here to explore more of the wine list because, um, like I kind of said before, this is something that I want to get a little more involved in is, is learning the Italian wines. And you and I are going to talk a little bit later off camera about a trip to Italy <laughs> and, and advice for me. Um, actually, we can maybe talk about that real quick. Um, if someone wants to go to Italy and, and do like a wine thing instead of like, you know, obviously they might want to do the touristy stuff, but if there's like a wine area or a couple areas they may want to look at, where, where would you suggest? Well, the two regions of Italy that are the best set up for, for wine, food and wine tourism, of course, are Piedmont and Tuscany. Okay. Uh, you know, I just got back from, uh, I was in Panzano County, right in County Classico, and, you know, you literally have these five villages that go down a road that heads north to, from north to south. Each village has a little uh, salami shop, it has a little trattoria, has a little, you know, wine shop. They're, they all, you know, they're, I went into Dario Cecchini's famous uh, butcher shop. When you walk into a shop, the first thing you do is hand you a little glass of uh, Chianti Classico. You're right in the heart of Chianti Classico and a little piece of Costino with some uh, spread of lard on it. Uh-huh. Uh, and it just, they're really set up there. That's that's typical to find everywhere. All the wineries have wine tastings uh, uh, you know, open to the public. Uh, I recommend making an appointment, but a lot of them are open to the public uh, every day. Um, Piedmont, not so many uh, public wine tastings. You have to make appointments for everything, but of course Piedmont is the uh, the high-end uh, food and wine mecca of Italy. You know, that's white truffles, that's uh, uh, great beef, uh, 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 lot more Michelin star restaurants in the uh, Albese, the township, or surround, the area surrounding the township of Alba, I think than anywhere else in Italy. Uh, and of course, so many iconic wineries. And they'll, it, most of them require an appointment, and I recommend that you buy a little wine right. where you go because they're get, they're bringing out the wine to taste for you. Uh, but it's you know really set up. Having said that, all of Italy is a mosaic of, of food and wine. I'm I'm working on my next trip. I hope will be to Calabria, uh, where you don't hear a lot of people going. Uh, I just got back from Friuli. Everywhere you go in Italy, you're going to find wineries and restaurants that support that winery community that offer you expressions of local foods, how they pair with local wines. There's the Danny Meyer, right? The Danny Meyer, you know, it grows with it, it goes with it. So everywhere you go in Italy, you can find that. But definitely Tuscany and Piedmont uh, are the most well set up. Now, my, my plan is Tuscany, and, and we'll talk a little bit off camera about some other stuff and and uh, who to contact. But uh, you know that that's something that I'm personally looking forward to doing uh, next year sometime. But like like I said, with here, I'm looking forward to not just trying the food, but having a wine list that's more than about six Italian wines. You know, there's a couple of Italian restaurants here that they've got like got a few Italian wines on their list, and that's about it. And, well, you know, and you talk about your, you have an extensive wine by the glass uh, menu, and I, I really appreciate that because, again, there's a couple places that it's like, you know, like a couple glasses and like it's the same old iron stuff. Yeah, what, I, what I've tried, <laughs> what, I, what we've done with the wine list is uh, serve wine by the glass and then also by a Portino, which is a, yeah. a quarter of a quarter liter breath, hoping to motivate and entice, you know, our guests to try a specific wine, maybe with the first first course of the meal, and then perhaps switch to another, you know, high quality wine with their entree, rather than buying selecting one bottle and having to drink that wine throughout the whole meal. So, right, and that's that's how I yeah. that's usually how I try to pair my wines with. I try to pair by course, so and, and, and usually I'm by myself. So having that by the having a good by the glass selection is something I'd like to see because if I only can get a couple glasses, you know. 
couple of glasses of wine, then I'm like, well, kind of restricted. But if I can find stuff like, like you have the Portino, so you can, that expands a little more, um, or even like half bottles I've seen in other places, it's, it makes it easier to really try some some different wines instead of like, well, I'm not going to buy a whole bottle of wine just for my one entree. <laughs> yeah. sure. Joe's, Joe's wine program is so awesome, and I think it's what first started our friendship was that when I first came here, his focus on time on and his focus on native varieties from, you know, Alianico, for example. Right. And uh, I just, I, I love his wine for that. Awesome. Yeah, I would encourage, you know, individuals to to retry some of the Italian wines. I've been drinking, you know, wine for 10 or 15 years. One category that I think has changed a lot is Chianti. You know, the Chiantis of 10 or 15 years ago may have had a certain level of characteristic and, uh, and depth, but I, I think you'll find that, that Chiantis and Chianti Classicos as one ca- category, as it stands, has really grown a lot and there's a lot more diverse profiles within the Chianti uh, selections. All right. So I would ask people to revisit it if they had some sort of, you know, certain connotation of the wine 10 years ago. I think a lot has changed. Right, especially the the, the old wicker basket, you know, the basket, which actually I just did one, a Palagio half bottle, which I thought was pretty decent. Um, it's like a couple episodes ago. But, um, and I, I, I avoided buying, buying those because of like, my perception is it's low quality wine. And it wasn't bad. I mean, I actually enjoyed it. It was, it was a $7 bottle of wine that was a half bottle. So I'm thinking that, you know, it's about it's about priced right for what it was. Um, but, yeah, I, mean, just, I think Chianti has that bad reputation, just like, you know, uh, the German Blue Nun, you know, for people in our somewhat age group. Um, you know, Blue Nun was what people knew about German wine, you know, or people that were our age back then, let's put that way. <laughs> and and I think that that's you know Riesling is having that, that same thing they're trying to you know people are trying to get more back into Riesling because it, they're realizing the quality is getting better I'm agreeing with you on the county there because you know I, I've really enjoyed the counties I've had and um, you know I, I want to get more into just the general Italian wine but yeah excited about some of the county stuff and I think that's probably why I really want to hit that Tuscany area just because I want to try to and I, I will be going down to Ravello too. Nice. I, 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 if I don't go, the family will kill me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Literally. Where's Alianico coming from? You know, the area around me. Fantastic Alianico. Yeah, fantastic wine. Very nice. Well, um, I just want to really thank both of you for one. I want to thank thank for the invite, and two, really just saying yes to a little bit of an interview. Um, that everyone was comfortable on a camera. Um, that everyone was comfortable in this situation. So it's it's nice to be able to to get a yes like here come on in and, and uh, really appreciate that I'm looking forward to the dinner um, and uh, this will be up well as far as for your information this will be up probably sometime in the next week or so um, I've got a few episodes ahead of this um, but it doesn't mean I can't I usually try to put these types of episodes on Friday so it will either be this Friday or next Friday uh, that way there's the weekend that, that since I have a three times a week I usually try to have featured videos as the Friday video so that's usually what I try to do um, and try to kind of do oh yeah and and it's, it's great because uh, I also don't because of the industry that I'm in um, being a restaurant manager myself you know five nights a week I'm usually doing stuff so on my two nights off a week it's, it's nice to see that there's something that interest me in the wine side of things that I can go participate in, so I really appreciate that. Can I say one more thing to your viewers? Yes, absolutely. Read this man's blog. <laughs> Follow this man. Absolutely. All right, so first of all, i got to give him the props. Go to his blog, follow him, friend him up, hit him on Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want. Um, stop by the website here, uh, but also stop by here. If you're in San Antonio, which I have some local viewers, but I also have international viewers, so we make a trip to San Antonio. you got to come to Luce. All right, this is at I-10 and Hebner Road, um, so it's on the northwest side of town. You'll easily be able to find it on the Internet. Um, and then, of course, on my side of things, 
come by, stop by the website, because if you're watching on TiVo on your couch, you got to come to the website and leave comments and all that. I'll have links to uh, both uh, Jeremy's blog, a link to uh, the restaurant down below, so you got to come to the website to click that. Uh, friend me up, hit the buttons up top, leave some comments below, and uh, I got that donate thing, hit the donate button on PayPal. That's going to do it for today. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Paisan. Thank you very much, Paisan. Thanks so <laughs> Thank much. you, Jeremy. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time. Bye.